audio and video issues only please don't share your information and questions during the lecture after completion of the lecture i will share google form link its purpose is feedback and sharing the content of lecture in pdf and question and answer through chat only and the next webinar of igs guntur chapter will be on 22nd july by professor venki uddameri civil environmental and construction engineering texas tech university usa on groundwater contamination and remediation now i feel it privileged to introduce today's speaker dr parthasarathy he holds b and me degrees in civil geotechnical engineering from bangalore university and phd in geotechnical from iisc bangalore in 2002 he started his career as a geotechnical engineer in 1993 he was involved in numerous large scale site investigation engineering studies at various levels for multi storied complexes industrial buildings embankments bridges water retaining structures subways pavements offshore platforms pipelines and mobile drilling units etc he has undertaken pile drivability studies jacob rick foundation investigations and design including jacob rick moves he was involved in the pile installation monitoring of several offshore platforms and has served qqc engineer for several geotechnical investigations on dedicated survey vessels his peer of activities has extended beyond from india to southeast asia and middle east africa and usa he is the founder director of sardi geotech and engineering services private limited the company with its registered office at bangalore was established in 2008 to provide both offshore and on land integrated geotechnical engineering services in india and abroad as a technical partner of pile dynamics usa he is instrumental in promoting quality testing of deep foundations in india and authorized trainer for high strain dynamic pile testing he is the life fellow of indian geotechnical society and member of several other professional bodies like dfi isrm indian concrete institute institution of engineers etc he is currently elected as national executive member of indian geotechnical society for 2018 to 20 and chairman of indian geotechnical society bengaluru chapter we all welcome you sir to the session uh, now i request parthasarathy sir to continue the session sir please unmute yourself yeah. thank you thank you susmita good evening to all of you <coughs> at the outset i thank the organizer <coughs> for giving me an opportunity to share some experience the topic of today's presentation is uh, case study design and installation of driven piles for high rise building at first i thank professor ramarao for facilitating this uh, webinar and susmita for giving a very elaborate introduction of myself so before i begin the presentation i would like to pray almighty to give strength and immunity to all of us and amid this covid pandemic i wish all of you stay safe and stay healthy <clears throat> so before i go into the actual topic i want to introduce my company we have added some new services so for just a couple of minutes and then i will jump into the presentation so this company we started in 2007 to provide services on an integrated approach for both offshore and on land construction this is our vision is to be the leading player and service provider of choice and the mission is to be an innovative geotechnical company complemented by geological and geophysical services uh, driven by values to provide top class solutions mm -hmm. so we derive lot of experience and large database that's we will be able to provide value engineering to the customers so most of our, <coughs> our services are concentrated on the oil and gas sector but predominantly now we started to <coughs> provide service to the real estate and railway infrastructure as well and some part to the mining renewable and dams so more than 50% of the service is consumed outside the country and thus the state government 
and the central government are recognizing in conferring the export awards consistently for the last few years i'm sure even this year will be honored with this prestigious award too as far as the service is concerned the offshore geotechnical and geophysical investigations always we advocate an integrated approach or site survey performing a geophysical investigation first identifying the geohazards and develop the scope of geotechnical investigation and use all this information together for the foundation assessment so the pile drivability study is a pre installation st <coughs> study for selecting the hammer to ensure that the piles are not overstressed and what would be the blow counts during driving so, so, so perhaps i will share in the case study that we have also performed this pile drivability study particularly during driving analysis is essentially a point service to evaluate the damage doesn't happen for the welds for the steel piles pile monitoring using pile driving analyzer is a, again one of our core competence capap is a post test analysis of this pile driving after the pile driving <coughs> high strain dynamic test using pda leg penetration analysis and points to assessment and the rest of them goes as a part of the engineering report that we normally perform for the offshore projects and here is the list of uh, international softwares and the latest addition is plaxis 3d to model complex problems as for the online sector the geophysical investigation we have added all these services msw seismic refraction cross hole resistivity so on then we added this spt analyzer to measure the energy transfer when you are conducting the spt test which is very very important <clears throat> design of shallow and deep foundation bearing capacity settlements slope stability board pile testing using the same pile driving analyzer and the integrity methods i will talk about it in the next slides and all the green ones are nabl accredited both the pda pit cross hole sonic other things and forensic geotechnics so the case study is also part of the forensic study which i am going to share with you we also provide an end to end solution for particularly deep excavation we have been successful in executing design and build more than a dozen projects in bangalore to a maximum depth of about 18 meters vertical cuts as far as the deep foundation testing static load test both in compression pull out and lateral and the dynamic test comprising of the low strain pile integrity test you can see the exometers with a small handled hammer you can find evaluate the integrity of this pile cross hole sonic logging test this is again an integrity methods where the access tubes are placed along with the reinforcement cage before the concrete is poured then you insert the trans receivers and measure the velocity of the pulses between a known distance and then you can evaluate the integrity of the pile very very accurately within the reinforcement okay you have the shape as you see in the right side top corner this equipment can be directly plugged into your Kelly bar of the piling rig, which radiates the ultrasonic pulses, and as you lower down into the boreholes, you can evaluate the shape of the boreholes, particularly evaluating the diameter and the alignment. And this is very useful for very large diameter board piles. Squid is a shaft quantity identification device. This also goes in direct to the Kelly bar. You see three penetrometers here, and also three retractable plates. So as you lower down into the borehole. if you have a contaminated mark at the bottom of the boreholes the forces are read by the penetrometers and these retractable plates move up and these are instrumented and thus you will be knowing what will be the thickness of those contaminated at the base of the uh, boreholes and this is very very useful particularly for those rock socketed piles deriving most of the capacity from the end bearing there are certain guidelines particularly in the us that says that the average Uh, thickness of these contaminations cannot exceed more than 2 inch if it so you have to actually clean the borehole and ensure that those contaminations are removed before pouring the concrete so that ensures the quality control particularly the rock socketed piles the high strain dynamic test this is a <coughs> the pile driving analyzer we are technical partners of pile dynamic to represent them in this part of the world to conduct training uh, workshops webinars and also providing consulting services 
The training includes the wave mechanics background, proper practice, how to do the test right, video quality, data assessment and application and interpretation, CAPF theory operations examples. This is a three day course, a full three day, including demonstration of the equipments. But now online course we squeeze into a couple of days is a paid training. Uh, you can reach out to us if anybody is interested so we can customize uh, the timings and then we can work out the training itself. So this uh, quick uh, introduction of the company. So let me get into the actual presentation. So before I actually begin the presentation, I want to give a perspective of pile foundations, particularly the uh, driven piles, <clears throat> because this is also very important uh, as we look at the results that I'm going to share. Uh, from this project. As we all know, the type of piles could be a displacement pile or a non-displacement pile, right? And the displacement piles could be a steel pile or a concrete pile. The non-displacement is a board piles. These are very commonly used in our country. And in this displacement pile, it could be a precast pre-stressed pile or just a normal reinforced concrete precast piles. So the case study I'm going to present will be of just a simple reinforced concrete precast pile that was adopted in one of the projects. As you all know, the capacity of the pile can be derived from the base if it is an end bearing pile, or if majority of the capacity is derived by the skin friction or the surface area of the pile, so it's all friction piles. We also know that the total capacity is a summation of the skin friction and the end bearing. And of course, there are many methods that can evaluate the capacities. You could see here, even IS codes prescribes, I'm sure we all of us follow the Indian codes to evaluate the capacity. So how to confirm <coughs> this uh, capacity by static analysis? So one has to do a load test. So when we do a load test, I just pick up some guidelines from the Federal Highway document the static load test, we apply a factor of safety of two, right? And even the IS code suggests that if you physically put the load on the top of the pile and evaluate your capacity, you can adopt a factor of safety of two. If the static analysis is performed, like we saw in the previous slide, you apply a factor of safety 2.5, even the IS code prescribes that uh, to factor of safety of 2.5. But you see here, Gates dynamic formula, if you use a dynamic formula to evaluate the capacity, you have a higher factor of safety to be used. That's about 3.5. But apparently our IS code doesn't prescribe any factor of safety if you're evaluating the capacity by the dynamic formula. But IS code simply suggests that you can use any established dynamic formula without uh, mentioning anything on the factor of safety. So the proof test is done like this, putting a cantilage either by the concrete blocks or the sandbags, or maybe you can also have the reaction anchors. So I just draw your attention here at the bottom of the cantilage where you put your jack on the top of the pile, and then you load it by reaction loading by using a calibrated pressure gauge. So it will always be good if we use a load cell in between the reaction frame and the jack, because we always question the calibrations of this jack, we will see the results of the load test from this case study. <clears throat> now, the perspective of driven piles. So, uh, actually, to give you a background to this project, this uh, actual project is sub -judice. That's why I refrain to take names of any parties involved in this project but that's not relevant. I just want to bring out some technical facts that has gone into these projects and perhaps it may be a good lessons learned and a takeaway from all of us for a good practice in the future. So with that premise, there was an argument say that these driven piles are all very new for us. So we do not know this technology, only somebody has prescribed it and so on and so forth. But to give you a perspective on these driven piles, this exists from Neolithic age, Neolithic times. You see the lake dwellers in Switzerland, North Italy, Austria, East France constructed their villages on the driven piles, right? And Chinese have built bridges on the driven piles. So driven piles are not new for our civil engineers. 
the greeks romans utilized the driven piles to support the bridges the amsterdam which was constructed in 1300s also used driven piles to support these bridges <clears throat> right and those in those days the equipment used to drive the piles were a simple primitive dead weight manually operated and perhaps even in this project it was similar one but not manually operated but it was mechanized dropping a dead weight to the pile to drive the pile then in the 18th century you have some mechanized device some automatic uh, drop hammer release but it was apparently not used in this project so this is how you cast the precast pile in the yard you mark it you lift it and you position and then start driving this is a hammer but you can also use a dead weight guided dead weight with a helmet and a cushion to drive the piles so apparently i think this was the <clears throat> mechanism that was used to drive the pile in this project as well and right side you could see you can also use a hammer to drive the pile if you are very soft clay perhaps you need to use a template to ensure that these piles are not out of tolerance okay then as a guide and even if you are driving piles in offshore environment you use the jacket structures where the corner cans will be a guide to drive these piles inside the can up to the water depth and beyond that it goes into the ground so ensure that the positioning tolerance is within the prescribed limits now i just want to explain to you these driven piles are not very new to civil engineers it exists for several hundreds of years but in early days what was the measurement available for these driven piles the measurement was only the set per blow with an assumed efficiency the energy transfer to the pile was equated to the work done and then there are several empirical formulas that were developed as you could see here the dutch formula is the earliest one okay and then you have weiss pack then the gates formula etc etc to evaluate the capacity of the piles but i draw your attention to the last column any of these empirical formulas they prescribe a very high factor of safety around 3 to 6 even rankin's formula highly's formula in fact the highest court prescribed this highly's formula prior to 2010 revision that is in the 1979 edition and later on in the 2000 uh, revisions they have removed this highly's formula but still today which is the latest version prescribes that any established formula dynamic formula could be used but any of those formula if you look at the factor of safety is very high minimum is 3 and it goes up to as high as 6 if you scan to the literatures there could be some formulas which also has much higher factor of safety up to 8 okay with these few examples <coughs> except this rapes formula which is a combination of dynamic and static formula the factor of safety as a minimum 3 to maximum can be 6 or higher very important point to note that when you use a dynamic formula to evaluate or compute your ultimate capacities we have to use a very high factor of safety a minimum of 3 or maybe it can go up to 8 so the simplicity of most pile driving formulas lead to the major disadvantage that is the inaccuracy of these formulas itself the use of pile driving formula exclusively can lead to dangerously low factor of safety or uneconomically high ones and the variety and number are matched only to by their shortcomings in fact there are hundreds and hundreds of dynamic formulas that is available uh, so if you scan to the literatures perhaps you can get all those information now this is a chart that is an extract from the ac conference in 1941 the big names in geotechnical engineering tezagi kasagrande skemtam so all of them were present in this conference and the database between 1930 to 1940 about 10 years of database were presented in this conference and terzaghi himself has <coughs> compiled this and presented on the x axis is percentage of observed load at failures compared to the static load test and then developed these capacities by various dynamic formula so you see this is 100% if all of them were to be very accurately predicting 
compared to the static load test, these data points should have collapsed to this line. But apparently, as you see, the extremities is between 50% to 300% variations. Does this give any one of us confidence to use any of those dynamic formulas to evaluate the capacity? That is the reason that the factor safeties are so high when you use a dynamic formula. In fact, the pile dynamics released a newsletter. They mentioned this pile designs based on dynamic formulas were already disgraced in 1940s due to inaccuracies. They were referring to that previous slide, AC conference proceedings, which Tezagi had compiled. Right. <clears throat> so what if the piles are like this? These are not raker piles. These are all just normal piles which were supposed to carry the load, but uh, apparently when they're excavating the pile cap, they're all inclined. So you never know when the pile is in the grounds, what will happen or the integrity of the piles unless you test it, right? So we'll talk about this in the next few minutes. There could be cracking of the pile as you drive through uh, into the very soft clays or maybe with the hard clay, hard uh, grounds where the stresses exceeds uh, uh, the limits. But unless it is measured, you will have no control to identify these anomalies if it were not to be measured. So there could be many anomalies in the pile installation, right? There could be toe damage, there could be break in the pile, even steel piles driving to rocks can have the toe damage and so on and so forth. So a mere static load test will not give you all this information. So perhaps uh, these anomalies can be very early detected if you use quality control methods. Apparently in this case study, which I'm going to talk, not use any of these technologies that were perhaps available at that time when this project was on. So today the owners, engineers and contractors have a whole arsenal of modern technology and tools available to them to assist in providing safe and efficient and economical deep foundation solutions. So as I said, the driven piles, the earliest measurement, only measurement was available was the set per blow. Okay. And there was a limitation. Because of that limitation, then the research began at Case Institute of Technology in the early 60s under the guidance of Professor Gobble, which resulted in the development of pile driving analyzer, wave equation analysis program, and the CAPAP analysis. I'm not going to talk any of these methods today. I'm just giving you a background because we talk about the driven piles from there, uh, the uh, research began. So what we understand from this perspective is use of dynamic formula requires a very high factor of safety to be used. Now, let me get into the actual case study. So we, this was a very multi-story residential complex, ground plus 17 stories in one of the coastal town of the country. As I said, this matter, this project was subjudice, hence I refrain to take any names uh, of any parties involved or the location itself, but that's not relevant now for us. I think we just have to look at the actual technical aspect of this. So the <clears throat> soil conditions was very poor. Based on the geotechnical investigation, uh, it was uh, proposed by the structural engineer who was engaged by the owners uh, <clears throat> for the adoption of pile foundations. So initially they proposed to have a bold pile, 900 millimeter diameter, about 55 meter deep. And the owners floated the tender. There were many participants to the project, the piling contractors. And one of them, he came back with an alternate proposal instead of bold cast in situ pile. So he will propose precast pile. Instead of 900 millimeter diameter, he proposed to have 400 millimeter square. And the basic length of the pile is about 60 meters, whereas these 900 millimeter diameter board piles was about 55 meters deep. Then the economical advantage prompted the owners to go for this new methodology, and they awarded the contract to the piling <coughs> contractors who proposed the precast pile. As I said, the basic length of 60 meters when they started driving the piles, some of the piles terminated at a very shallow depth around 32, 34 meters many of them between 40 to 45 meters. So this actually alerted the owners and the structural engineers to question how the capacity would be achieved if you are not driving the pile to a basic length of 60 meters. 
then the co piling contractor said you identify any of those piles which uh, he has driven we will do a load test and then he will prove that the capacity can be achieved then they identified the pile and the load test were performed and the, there was hardly few millimeters of settlements and he said that yes it can take the load likewise the project progressed at this point of time the owners and the structural engineers roped in a geotechnical consultant who also gave a lot of feedback on the methodology procedures the capacity uh, assessment the factor of safety that was adopted and so on and so forth but apparently nobody stopped the project but the piling continued towards uh, the latest part of the project the owner side engaged the contractor the building contractor to excavate and continue with this pile cap so when they started excavating for the pile cap you see these piles are all inclines this just a 2 meters of removal of the overburden in the top so this again puzzled everybody and those piles were all uh, very loosely uh, disturbed when you shake by hand so the all the stakeholders puzzled and then they called in everybody they had series of meetings and finally it was decided that these piles which was terminated at a very shallow depths could not take the design load after the piling was completed then all the stakeholders decided that we have to do some remedial measures and this project requires some additional foundations so this time the additional foundations was not the three cast pile but it was gone ahead with the original tender proposed 900 mm board piles then after that there was much difficulty for the structural engineers because the capping was all now odd sizes with great difficulty they completed the pile cap the superstructure has come out and you could see the superstructure actually this is not a real original image i'm sorry about it i just googled it and did it i didn't want to put the original image here then the building is standing now it's more than one and a half decades but what is the problem if the building is safe see one of the potential buyer for this project he had paid upfront money to the principal client did not get this property registered in his name within the time frame so he went to the consumer court then the high court then the supreme court and finally the supreme court ordered the principal client to register the property in gentleman's name and also pay him back 1 lakh rupees extra so he got the, he got the property free plus some additional cash to compensate perhaps for the interest and other component but you see there are several hundreds of uh, property owners with this as a case study all the owners filed a suit against the builder or the uh, owner or the principal client then he was really puzzled and how do we handle all this then he reflected himself and see said where did it go wrong finally they concluded that the delay was due to the piling contractor and then they filed, the principal client filed a suit against the piling contractor and the matter was in arbitration it was going on for few years perhaps all the stakeholders involved in the project are good friend of us particularly myself but then one of the occasions i was having a discussion with the principal client he was describing that he has a problem of deep foundations driven pile precast pile and so on and so forth uh, intuitionally i said there could be something wrong in the designs then immediately he said can you help me on this also all the stakeholders in were all our good friends it was our conviction that there is something wrong here perhaps i just want to bring out the technical fact keeping aside all the other aspects of the projects so i had taken this assignment to deeply look into the uh, informations and then provide some uh technical <coughs> support and bring out some facts which i'm going to share you in the next few slides and then finally the argument was going on i will like like to share the outcome of uh, the decision perhaps towards the end of this uh, presentation after i present the ca cases here with all the facts i leave it to the audience to make your own judgment what could be the final outcome the contents i have described like this general perspective was already covered pile capacity by dynamic formula in fact i have covered it dynamic testing i am not going to cover because there was none in this project 
we have made foundation assessment of drivability study props i am going to explain to you review of factor of safety by dynamic formula capacity by static methods basically the is codes and summary of static pilot test i am going to present to you some results of this pilot test non linear analysis of piles using group software plexis analysis finally summary and conclusion so this was a high rise buildings again i apologize for not putting the original image intentionally i have removed it i hope all of you can understand that <clears throat> so any deep foundation to be designs will follow the following steps one is to estimate the allowable capacity of a single pile by any static methods and the geotechnical information adopt a factor of safety of 2.5 which apparently the contractor has not done in this project based on the column loads that is the service loads determine the number of piles required for the group i think this was done by the contractor and thus arrived at various group configurations so the loads were furnished by the structural engineer he has assumed some capacity so the load by the capacity is the number of piles he has rounded off and then he has arrived at the number of piles for each of those columns lateral capacity it was not done we will see the geotechnical data although there were 20 to 30 meters of soft clays and this is a high rise building around 17 floors anything more than 15 meters i think you need to consider the lateral loads the next step is to perform the drivability study or wave equation program to just ensure that the piles are not overstressed what would be the approximate blow counts but it was not done by the contractor the pile group analysis to be performed either by elastic or numerical methods both for service loads to verify the deformations both the vertical and the lateral and ultimate loads or the factor loads to determine the structural reinforcement these were not done by the contractor the initial static vertical load test applying 2 and 1/2 times the allowable capacity to confirm the estimated static capacity this was done by the contractor on one pile and routine static load test applying 1.5 times the allowable capacity this was done by the contra piling contractor on five numbers of piles perform initial static lateral load test not done and also the routine lateral load test not done essentially the lateral load test was not at all considered in this project pile driving monitoring it was not done although the technology existed at that point of time in the country perform a restrike test to estimate long term capacity of driven piles to ensure there is a setup or and not the relaxation so setup is an increase in the capacity relaxation is a decrease in the capacity with time this was not done by the contractor other criteria to satisfy structural requirement namely the buckling even our is code suggest that if the pile is going through a very soft clay of 1 kg per centimeter square or less shear strength you need to consider the buckling effect but is not been considered by the contractor in the absence of the monitoring capacity estimation of driven piles is based on the dynamic formula this is followed by the contractor so let us discuss about these few aspects in the subsequent slides so any tall structures requires an intensive site investigations if you look at the literature just a sample basis i have extracted one so the tall towers within the footprint of 46 meter square you have about 12 boreholes that is carried out but in this project <clears throat> there is only about four boreholes that has been performed although the area is about 3 and 1/2 acres so within the information that is available perhaps these four boreholes were also done as a reconnaissance investigations even before the principal client entered into a joint agreement with the land owner and the same reconnaissance information was carried on and further used for the design of the foundations even without a detailed geotechnical investigation so within the available four boreholes we have just presented the stratigraphy here borehole 1 2 4 and 3 so some of the piles terminated at 35 meter right and most of the piles were at this depth they terminated between 40 to 45 meters you could see 50% of the site you have sand layer and the other 50% you have clay layer right <clears throat> some piles were driven up to 55 meters plus or minus 1 meter here and there i draw your attention that there could be some localized sand lenses when 
the piles are terminated, it could be okay for an individual pile, but when the group today, the influence is to a greater depth underlying by a weak material, that could be really dangerous. A classical example of this is a charity hospital that is published in Tazagan text textbook. You see the single pile driven into the Muram, and then you have a weak layer here under the group, the influence is to a greater depth and the failure is imminent. Right? <clears throat> Now, the geotechnical data suggest that n values were either zero or one in the top 20 meters in borehole one. There were only four boreholes that was carried out. And it was also in borehole two around 18 meters. In borehole three, you see it's also about 21 meters and 27, 28 meters. So in the top 20, 18 to 28 meters, you have very soft clays. The shear strength perhaps would be less than 10 kilopascal at these locations. So and thus the pile foundation was adopted. <clears throat> the geotechnical report presented the allowable capacity like this for 500, 600 and 700 millimeter diameter of piles, 74, 106 and 144. The structural engineer, when they proposed initially on the tender stage, the board cost institute pile extrapolated this to 900 millimeter diameter to 240 metric tons, right? But this was apparently not uh, used in the project, but what was used in the project is a 40 millimeter square. If you subs subscribe that to a circular di diameter, it will be 45 centimeters. If you backward, you will get an allowable capacity of only 60 metric tons for those piles. <clears throat> So what was adopted in this project is 180 metric tons. We will just see how these 180 metric tons came into picture. Separately, we did some drivability study. <clears throat> Before that, the static capacity was estimated to ensure that the initial tender specified uh, capacity was in order. So 240 metric tons of 900 millimeter diameter. So 2.5 times around 600 metric tons. If you look at the weakest boreholes is around 53 meters required. So therefore the initial penetrations of 55 meters was in order. So you just confirmed that the initial proposed by the principal client was okay. Even for this smaller size of the pile, the basic length was 60 meter with 180 ton metric tons of allowable capacity that was assumed in this project multiplied by two and a half times a 450 metric tons for the weakest borehole would be around 57. So perhaps the initial assumed 60 meter without considering any the structural effect of this because it's a very slender pile. Geotechnically, perhaps the 60 meter was all right, but when they apparently they started driving, it refused at a shallow depth. So as per IS 456, if you work out the structural capacity, the permissible structural capacity, which had these piles had four numbers of 25 millimeter bar, you get around 180 metric tons. I think the contractor, the piling contractor adopted this permissible structural capacity as the allowable capacity, which is three times the geotechnical capacity. So we saw just now in the previous slide, 60 metric tons is the allowable capacity for these piles. Now, actually, after this assignment, I actually went to the site, walked around all over the buildings. The buildings are all intact. We went to the basement. There was a shed with a lot of spider webs. So you had to go and search for some information, whether, if at all, we can get. But fortunately, we could dig out four big files of the driving records. That was actually a treasure at that point of time. So we picked up those information, and then we started looking into it. Summarizing from those driving records, there were 44 numbers of piles less than 35 meters, 431 piles between 35 to 45 meters. Mostly in these 431 piles, 90% were between 40 to 44 meters. So about 60 numbers between 45 to 55 meters, and there were very few of them going beyond 55 meters. So this is the pile configuration, and you see these four boreholes here, the yellow ones, one, two, three, these are the four boreholes. But if you just look at those piles concentrated to borehole one, these number of piles were terminated at 35 meters. 
okay if you go back to the geotechnical strata you could see that in borehole one the piles were terminated at this depth where it is still in the cohesive layer okay and most of the piles between 35 to 45 meters was scattered all over the boreholes between 45 to 55 meters there were few numbers about 16 numbers and those piles going beyond 55 meters hardly about 13 in numbers were all scattered so i presume that these piles would have already been broken <clears throat> i'll just draw your attention that you could see some kind of bedrock boulders or strong layers these piles slender piles could go in an inclined fashion you keep on adding the section at the top you can continue driving those piles but if you encounter some kind of strong localized material like your decayed wood or so the piles also could be broken the argument in this case from the lawyer on the other side is that during the excavation of the pile cap the principal clients used a mechanized excavator particularly the poke line and this poke line has pushed the pile such that it has it is inclined and is nothing to do with any installation or so on but if the driving stresses are so large there could be cracks in the pile which we cannot uh, rule out if there could be a cracks then these piles could be a floating pile a simple push you don't need an excavator even a hand push can move this pile right and if you could also see some localized lands uh, sand lenses the pile could deviate like this or the pile could also terminate at a very shallow depth although there could be some weak materials we already saw this now one of the column pile column near borehole 1 they were piles driven between 32 to 76 meters within the same group you see the difference in the pile penetrations and so with the other one so i'll just take this as an example if you have this kind of differences even the is code prescribes that you go and do a borehole within the center of the pile group to evaluate what is there so apparently the borehole was done as the insistence of the geotechnical consultant who was roped in for this project when they actually uh, saw that the piles were all inclined in this new borehole you could see here i just uh, excluded the top 20 meters beyond 20 meters at around 32 meters there was a decayed wood that is where the piles were terminated the driven piles it could not penetrate this decay wood beyond that in the same group if you go deeper the n values are all 14 18 41 and one of the piles at 42 meters it is terminated here as you scan through this n values again you already have the refusal here more than 100 more than 50 and it is crossing this refusal layer to a very deep thickness and one of the piles are terminated here and then there is another pile at 76 meters terminated within the same group so i am not sure how this pile could drive to this refusal stratum perhaps as you could see in the previous slides it would have been broken and then they are adding these sections at the top so there was some static load test uh, result that was carried out in this project apparently this was done by other agencies not the piling contractor okay if you look at this information the diameter of the piles i draw your attention to this column the measured gross settlement and the elastic compression of the pile you see that elastic compression of the pile for all the piles were less than the measured gross settlement so this is in order okay so all the piles the measured gross settlement is more than the elastic settlement and these tests were done not by the piling contractor but the other agencies but you look at this the load settlement curve from the piling contractor this is an elastic compression line and all the piles five in number you can see here which was 180 metric tons multiplied by 1.5 on 270 metric tons has only around 4 mm of settlements the measured pile top settlements which is less than your elastic settlement of the pile for the slender 400 mm dam square piles right except this tp1 is a initial pile load test which was loaded to 200 times that except this 
these results on the previous slide, even including this, the measured pile top settlements is hardly few millimeters. Your computed elastic comp compressions is much more than your measured gross settlement on the pile tops. So we are unable to comprehend this, how this could be. So therefore it is not okay. In fact, the contractor shared the low test results from several, several of his previous projects across the country. You could see the pile sizes, 300, 400, 235 and so on and so forth, except these black ones, which are all the lateral load tests, the rest of them are all axial compression. The gross settlements are only hardly few millimeters, four or five millimeters maximum. And elastic compression is much more than the gross settlement of the pile. In fact, he has also claimed that a 235 millimeter diameter piles were driven to 150 meters below the ground. That was a world record. It was a so small slender pile and which had only around four millimeters of pile top settlements. Now you just scan through some literature. This is a, a extract from Peck, Hansen and Taubin textbook. The elastic deflection of the pile is computed by means of expression PL by AE, as you could see here. At the uh, end bearing friction, other piles for every uh, load, every pile, any type of pile, the ultimate load, the elastic compressions will be much less than the pile top displacement. Okay, and this being an end bearing pile that is assumed because they were also assumed the, the uh, capacities as the permissible structural capacity, this ought to be an end bearing pile. At every load, the measured pile top settlement should be more than your elastic compressions, O, o dash, right? But the results presented by the piling contractor is the opposite. <clears throat> so we could also scan through some literature. This is a IGS paper for similar size of the pile, 400 millimeter diameter. On similar soil conditions, the settlements were measured in the order of about 20 to 40 millimeters, just not four or five millimeters. And you could go through some other literatures also. This is B and C is driven ordinarily for the precast piles of about 270 metric tons. B and C ordinarily driven piles. The settlements measured is out of about 20 to 37 millimeters. And thus we could conclude that these load tests from the piling contractor are unreliable and questionable. The allowable load is not established as per the IS 291185. So we did a drivability study. So for any drivability study, you require the soil resistance to driving. So we assume 50% reduction of strength in clay and no reduction in sand. White and dead weight were dropped on top of the pile with a one meter height, give you 50 kilojoules. So assuming 90% of the efficiency, it should be 45 kilojoules. With a 90% efficiency, the blow counts, if you look at it has to be driven to the depth of about 52 meters, but apparently these piles were not driven to that. Moreover, if these piles were to be driven to these depths with 90% efficiency, the stresses also to be intact. So the compressive stresses has no issues here. The permissible one is 29.75, although your predicted values are from 16 millimeters, but look at the predicted tensile capacity. So the predicted capacity, tensile stresses is, I mean, permissible is only about four MPa, where your predicted values is around 15 MPa here, right? This would have really cracked the pile. But assuming that these piles were not damaged, then your efficiency cannot be 90%. It has to be a lot less. So we just arbitrarily reduced the efficiency to half, around 90 to 45%. And then it was matching the pile penetrations, which is about 40 to 45 meters, right? <clears throat> In this case, the compressive stresses are also about 10 MPa and the tensile stresses is collapsing so almost towards the allowable tensile capacity. This assumes that the piles were not uh, damaged with intact. In that case, the efficiency is only about 45% and not more than that. So in fact, uh, we made some statistical uh, analysis for various uh, uh, efficiencies considering the weakest borehole, borehole two, and most of the piles were terminated here confirms that the efficiency could not be more than 15 to 30%. And in the strongest borehole, since most of the pile were terminated at this depth, it could be between 30 to 70%. Okay. And same way as we collected the driving records, 
for close to this borehole one there were some four five piles here we took the driving records of all these piles and then we arrived at a generic value and compared it with the predicted value the efficiency could be between 20 to 30 percent and not more than that and the same exercise continued for other borehole two also 50 20 to 30 50 percent 20 to 45 percent and around 20 percent okay now when you sum up this these are the piles that was in close to this borehole one to four the efficiency would be in this range okay it is never exceeded 50 percent in the prediction also 15 to 30 percent 30 to 70 percent if you take the average it could be around 25 to 40 percent and not more than that if you scan through the literatures for the type of hammer that is used, the drop hammer, the efficiency could be only between 25 to 40 as recommended by the Pile Driving Contractor Association. The US, also in the Tomlinson, he says that 40 to 55% for a drop winch operated. So with all this, we could say that the efficiency could not be 100%. So giving the benefit to the contractors, not even 55%, give him 60%. So we computed the factor of safety by the dynamic formula but apparently contractor use this dynamic formula to estimate the ultimate capacity. But I draw your attention that he used a factor of safety of two. Initially, we saw that the factor of safety should be high, more than three, up to six or seven. But in this case, he has used only factor of safety of two. So with the assumed efficiency of 100% with the contractor claims, a number of piles more than factor of safety three was around 21%. But our assessment, the benefit to the contractor, you want to consider 60% factor efficiency, you estimate that the factor of safety of 80% of the pile were less than two and hardly around 0.5% were greater than three. What does it suggest? So it suggests that the safety of foundations was would be jeopardized if safety precautions or additional remedial measures were not considered for this project. So thus we evaluated the ultimate pile capacities for those piles penetrating to 35 meters, 42 meters, 45 and 55 meters with an assumed allowable capacity of 180 metric tons, the factor of safety arrived with this number hardly had any factor of safety. Okay, now if these piles require a factor of safety of 2.5, and this will be the capacity and not 180 metric tons. So this is a derated capacity to achieve a factor of safety of 2.5. And if you take the average of all these, so those piles with 35 meters were 42 metric tons, 42 meters had 80 metric tons and so on. And the maximum, although it's highest, it was limited to 180 metric tons. So the capacity of 180 metric tons was very high to meet the factor of safety of 2.5. These piles were to be derated for the capacity and these were the capacity that was arrived at. Okay. I think the geotechnical consultant who was roped in at the beginning of the project also did the same exercise in similar lines. He arrived at the similar values and that's how he proposed to have some remedial measures with additional board piles. Now we'll have two more aspects to discuss, maybe another five to eight minutes I can conclude. So we just did some nonlinear analysis with a 900 millimeter diameter board pile just to ensure that the initial tender specified was in order. Okay, we modeled that in the group software. Uh, unfactored loads without any lateral loads. So we had some deformations for both the unfactored load and the factored load, the load sharing was uniform. But we did not know what lateral load was assumed in the initial tender specified pile configuration. So we actually induced 1% lateral load, 2% and 3%. At 3%, the fixity was giving away. So we confined that, okay, these piles can take maximum of 2% lateral load, not more than that. So with this 2% of 2000 metric tons, so one pile group, which has the maximum loads we picked up, equal to 40 metric tons on a group of nine piles. Therefore, it's 4.4 tons per pile, which is about 1.8% of the allowable load of 240 metric tons. That was the initial allowable capacity of the board piles. So the load sharing, the deformations, and the reinforcement was pr provided was adequate. This was verified for both factored load with the 2% of the lateral load. But the same 2%, if you induce on the 
small slender pile which had the bearing failure for those piles less than 35 meter penetration and in the factored load it has a bearing failure even for those piles which were penetrated to 45 meters to almost 50% of the site coverage area because these 50% were in still clay the rest of the 50% was in sand <clears throat> and also the reinforcement that was provided four numbers of 25 mm was not okay for this project where if you consider the lateral loads apparently i think the design did not consider any lateral load at all okay. now why there was a need for remedial measures so let us examine this so initially the 900 mm board pile had 472 in number and 728 if you work out the load into number of piles cumulatively is 1 lakh 17000 metric tons but what was proposed by the contractor with 400 mm as 180 metric tons with 576 in number and adding these two together is 1 lakh 11000 metric tons these piles should support which is already around 6000 metric tons of capacity less than the initial tender specified so that's the first step the second step those piles with various penetration the derated capacities here if you work out that the total capacity that we transfer to the pile is around 60000 metric tons some of the piles did not have the driving records if you add up it will be 72900 metric tons but not 117000 metric tons this is exactly around 60% of what it was supposed to take okay now there thus there was a remedial measures carried out in this project by inserting the additional board piles so i just picked up one group of piles with four slender piles and two additional remedial measures but if you just focus on this four piles without additional dmc piles that is the direct mud circulation board piles the factored load there was a bearing failure okay with nominal lateral load without the additional board piles again it had a bearing failure but if you introduce this board piles without lateral load it was okay all the results were okay and with inducing 2% of the lateral loads was also okay so this confirmed that there was a need for the additional board piles into this foundation system and after the installation of the additional board piles i think the system was safe which otherwise would jeopardize the safety of the foundations so this is a typical the response curves the deflection shear force and the bending moment now when you come back here uh, to this uh, summary 282 numbers of additional board piles was installed which added 67000 metric tons of capacity so if you add these together is 127000 metric tons more than the initial specified 173000 metric tons i think we didn't have some driving records excluding this also i think the pile system is okay and is safe by installing additional board piles the last aspect why there was a damage to the pile why the piles deflected uh, more than what it should be so these are the piles you could see here as you excavate for the pile cap these were piles are all inclined these are not record piles these are all inclined piles to put the pile cap and this has to support a superstructure of ground plus 17 stories so we just model in the plexis a monolithic pile with a two meters of excavations and induced a lateral force to that quantity and you could see the deformation is only about 137 mm if you provide a joint it could be no difference because both of them perform similarly but if you break the joint you had little higher deformation and if it was completely broken it becomes a floating pile so you had half a meter some of the piles were measured to have this kind of twelve top displacement so essentially it confirms that the pile could be broken and if the length of the pile was even much less just to give an example you had a deformation predicted of 1.6 meters but essentially this was also measured to have that kind of displacement pile top so what this confirmed to us the pile 
could have been broken because this all segmental precast pile the joints could have given away those joints were tested similar joints were tested long back in 1982 and none of those production piles were tested for the uh, joints in this project <clears throat> and the argument was that the jcb has pushed into the pile and it has sheared so as per is 456 the maximum shear stress of f25 con is about 3.7 newton per millimeter square therefore the shear force is around 59.2 for the pile to shear it requires a force of about 60 metric tons which force a mere soil movement cannot produce by an inward push of a jcb to sum up this so oh, the tender specified allowable pile capacity of 240 metric tons of 900 mm diameter and 55 m long pile was in order contractor proposed to drive precast segmental piles as an alternate foundation system to the client's initial tender specification and these precast piles were terminated at various penetrations during driving which was much less than the required 55 m the precast pile shallower than 55 meters do not meet the requisite allowable capacity of 180 metric tons or the requisite factor of safety of 2.5 of a single pile by static methods let alone the other structural requirement in fact if you look at the buckling this requires a size of about 550 mm but if you subscribe this to a circular 400 mm is only 450 mm so pre installation study suggests that the efficiency was not high less than 50% although we gave the benefit to the contractor at 60% efficiency 80% of the pile did not meet the requisite factor of safety of even 2 obviously for us we need to use a high factor of safety the group analysis indicate bearing values of pile shallower than 45 meters and it was inevitable to carry out the remedial measures by installing additional board piles now this original tender specified piles without which the safety of the foundation would have been jeopardized if this was not installed probably the building has gone to the ocean after installing these additional piles the required capacity was achieved ensuring the safety of foundation finite element plaxis analysis suggests that the lateral movement of piles more than 500 mm there is a possibility of shear of the piles due to overstressing during driving or splice damage apparently we did not have any back information of exhuming the piles and getting that information but we have to conclude based on this plaxis study and lastly the design and build of segmental precast driven piles proposed by contractor did not meet the client's requirement in terms of capacity length and safety but we were never been a part of this project at any stage or at any capacity and thus the conclusions drawn were only based on the review of the materials or information provided by the client so with this i conclude this presentation if you have any questions perhaps we could discuss if you have any alternate conclusions you could derive based on the information that was presented i'll be very happy to hear from the participant thank you very much for your patient hearing thank you sir thank you sir for explaining every detail of the case study and it's overall a nice presentation um before going to question and answer session everyone may please observe the feedback link was shared in chat box Sh chat box and its purpose is feedback and sharing the content of lecture in pdf now i request participants to post your queries through chat box sir yeah. sarathi sir yes yes are you able to see yeah, the yeah i am seeing chat? the chat i am seeing the chat uh, still okay, the question sir. excellent okay. presentation thank you very much sir 
have you faced problems at any site while installing driven pile noise and vibration resulted in complaints from neighbors who may become aware of pre existing problems or with their own building that they can blame on piling vibrations how you generally overcome it sir uh, to honestly speak uh, the driven piles are very uh, rarely used in the country <clears throat> but uh, i know of a case which i have handled there were existing refinery project the pipelines the pipe support and other things were on this kind of similar uh, precast piles which was used as ground reinforcing element there was an integration project a new project within the existing facility but uh, they asked us to evaluate whether the driven piles could be used in the same uh, facilities to integrate for the new uh, project but we made some analysis to evaluate and monitor the vibrations but uh, the literature suggests that the peak particle velocity if more than 2 inches per second uh, i think 50 mm or per second that would really damage the uh, structures so in that case we predicted uh, driving close to any existing structures would uh, create the peak particle velocity more than that uh, prescribed limits and thus we recommended that they don't want they don't integrate a new facility to within the existing facility i'm sure the similar could be for those buildings uh, that is coming closer to so now i also understand that the uh, driven piles close to any of those existing uh, structures the neighbors will not allow now even for those uh, uh, normal uh, percussion uh, methods of installing the pile using a tripod is uh, uh, not allowed in many projects where there is an adjacent structure in many coastal towns BCS Rao is an excellent presenter. Thank you very much, sir. Negative skin friction was considered in the soft glaze. <clears throat> in fact, uh, this was also a concern when the contractor proposed uh, when we reviewed. He said that negative skin friction is also a concern, but he will going to adopt uh, some coating mechanisms to the piles to relieve of this negative skin frictions. And apparently, this coating was not. Uh, carried out perhaps we did not see any documentary evidence of adopting this coating for those piles i think this was not considered in this particular project in the estimation of the capacities and perhaps that 180 metric tons was too high a value if you consider this negative skin friction uh, that would be even reducing uh, the further the capacity <sighs> Uh, how the retrofit of pile caps done so i think this was beyond the study that uh, i have undertaken in this perhaps i am not sure i know that i heard from the structural engineer that the pile caps were very odd sized and then he had to do a lot of uh, design changes and thus uh, they overcome that i am not really sure of what was actually done in the project which i did not i was not privy to for well reviewing the information <clears throat> Uh, the next question we have the length of pile suggested of the range of 35 to 55 meter initially looks to be very long for a 400 to 400 uh, 400 by 400 square precast pile in my view very slender pile should not have been suggested your comments please as as well were not rested enough into hard sound stratum with loss of soft clay were present to such a long depth of 28 meters so below the ground levels i think uh, as i said in my last slides we were never been a party to this project uh, this was only a review of the information perhaps this uh, uh, precast driven piles of this size as i speak to you i have also looked at uh, uh, some other project in iraq they have used this as a mere ground reinforcing element to just improve the ground and not as structural pile and this piles precast pile of so slender in size could be used for Uh, normal uh, buildings like residential building maybe warehouse buildings and not tall towers where your lateral load is going to be very high in this case it is too slender and the premise they use these piles <clears throat> i think were to drive it to a very low set per blow that is very high blow counts where the piles could be in essentially an incompressible layer and perhaps uh, they could derive Uh, most of the capacities by permitting it to the permissible structural capacity so this was the premise that uh, uh, the designs were made i believe and thus there was no geotechnical evaluations but only going by the driving records on the blow counts 
and finally adopting the dynamic uh, formula was actually disastrous for this <clears throat> have you considered effect of tensile forces in the piles in your studies no sir it was only confined to the axial capacity of the pile <clears throat> is there any chances the contractor for working out pile capacity by static formula by not considering the critical depth uh, the contractor has never considered Uh, the static analysis itself they just assumed it uh, uh, assumed the capacity of 180 metric tons so they never looked into the geotechnical uh, data they never uh, did uh, any analysis uh, statically and thus uh, they have not done is uh, the next question i see is the contractor want to design the board piles the contractor wants to design the board pile as a short pile which are the following data Pile length forty meter, diameter is point six. Fine sand soil zero to ten meter, clay strength to thirty. Stiff clay beyond relative stiffness ratio location to the sea coast. What would you recommend in this case? Uh, pile length is forty meters, and the pile diameter is point six meters. Your L by D is more than ten. I don't think it will be a short pile, sir. It should be a long pile. So probably you should produce, uh, follow the normal procedures. particularly if you have the lateral loads then you use your py method to get your response and then structurally size it what was the criteria to accept the contractor proposal apart from economical consideration considerations in fact reviewing these informations i don't think there is any other considerations apart from the economics they were very gungo that they could save few crores of rupees and thus they adopted this uh, technology and finally they end up spending more but with all this i also want to share that uh, the arbitration uh, completed within one year uh, after uh, this exercise i took i was cross examined by the other side lawyer in fact i also wanted to cross examine the opposite side but they did not turn out and finally the award was that they directed the piling contractor to reimburse about a million dollar or more than that to the principal client <clears throat> excellent presentation thank you sir rambabu yes, sir <clears throat> any of the driven piles got lifted while driving the new piles at the time of installation any observation at site uh, staff during installations there was no observation of uplift of these piles but there were record of those piles which has laterally moved i don't think uh, the records had any observations on uh, the uplift of those piles no sir it was not there i think i have answered all the question madam yes sir yes sir uh, now we may end up the session sir okay thank you very much if you have any you, further sir. questions you can write to me perhaps we can discuss yes. this yes yeah thank you thank you sir thank you very much